Hello and welcome to a new episode of Around the World in 7 Days. My name is Neil and I am here with the stories behind the most important international news events of the week. In the first story of the episode, we will discuss how after decades of feud, the two countries of Turkey and UAE are coming together. In the next story also, we will focus on the region of Middle East and will try to understand why Israel is looking forward to improving its relations with Arab countries and how Iran is related to this evolving situation. In the last story of this episode, we will discuss why South Korea has issued a warning to North Korea and why these two countries are locked in a missile race. Before I move on to the episode, there is an announcement for you. Dear viewers, Drishti IAS has launched Drishti Mentorship Program for Prelims 2022. The features of the program are as follows. 85 days rigorous mentorship program, quick revision classes, regular topic-wise tests, identification of weak areas and personalized guidance, available both in online and offline mode, and much more to enable you finish your syllabus and revise and test it multiple times before the actual exam. For more information, please visit the link given in the description below. You can also call us on the given numbers. Whenever the Middle East is mentioned, then certainly discussions will be held on political upheaval and turmoil of the region. New equations are formed and destroyed in the Middle East regularly. Due to this speciality of Muslim world, the whole world closely monitors the Middle Eastern countries. Of late, one can see this phenomena taking place between the two countries of Turkey and the United Arab Emirates. After a long feud, the two countries are finally coming together. Turkish President Erdogan recently visited UAE. It was Erdogan's first visit to UAE since 2013. The visit is being viewed as an attempt of mending the strained relations between the two countries after years of enmity so that joint efforts can be made towards economic partnership. It is so because Turkey's economic conditions are deteriorating due to Erdogan's economic policies. In this story, we will try to understand the whole matter and we will also discuss the background of the feud between Turkey and the UAE. First of all, let us look at the geographical location of both these countries. Turkey is bordered by Greece and Bulgaria to the northwest, the Black Sea to the north, Georgia to the northeast, Armenia, Azerbaijan and Iran to the east, Iraq to the southeast, as well as Syria and the Mediterranean Sea to the south. It also shares border with the Aegean Sea to the west. Below this quadrangle of the Middle East is the United Arab Emirates and it is located on the eastern end of Arabian Peninsula. It shares border with Saudi Arabia and Oman. It is a fact that most of the Middle Eastern countries are Muslim-majority countries. These countries of the Muslim world also keep on fighting due to their own political and economic interests. These countries sometimes fight in the name of Sunni-Shia conflict as well. But whenever a challenge is posed to Islam, these countries always stand united. These countries often come together under the banner of Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which keeps these Muslim countries united. When Israel attacked Palestine in 2021, then these countries posed united challenge. These countries were unanimous in their opposition to Israel. Interestingly, even at that time, these relations between Turkey and the UAE were full of tensions. The question remains that why did the relations between Turkey and the UAE deteriorate? In fact, the relations between these two countries had deteriorated at the time when the Arab Revolution was at its zenith in the Arab countries. On the one hand, a strong rebellion was going on for ousting the dictators of the Middle Eastern countries. On the other hand, the inter-relations between the Middle Eastern countries were also deteriorating. It was so because some Middle Eastern countries were supporting the rebel groups operating in other Middle Eastern countries. Turkey was one such country. Actually, Egypt was then ruled by Hosni Mubarak. He was in power in Egypt for nearly 30 years. Erdogan was supporting the Muslim Brotherhood 
for ousting Mubarak from power. When the Arab revolution's wave reached Egypt, then Mubarak was ousted from power and a democratic government was formed in Egypt for the first time under Mohammad Morsi's leadership. However, the establishment of a democratic government in Egypt did not go down well with a few Middle Eastern countries. It was so because most of the Middle Eastern countries were ruled by monarchy. Erdogan's role in overthrowing Egypt's monarchy did not go down well with the UAE. As its result, the relations between UAE and Turkey deteriorated. A pertinent issue is that Muslim Brotherhood is an Egyptian party. Then why the UAE feels threatened by it? When the Arab Revolution began, the Muslim Brotherhood was actively involved in Egyptian affairs. The party formed rebel groups against the monarchy in other Arabian countries also. These rebels were posing a challenge to the dictators from Tunisia to Syria. The wave of ousting dictators from power reached Yemen via Tunisia, Libya and Egypt. In such a situation, the United Arab Emirates ruler also started fearing that they will be ousted from power. The UAE started viewing the Muslim Brotherhood as a political and security threat. So, the UAE severed its relations with Turkey. But the matter did not stop here. Qatar, which always remains in news for its wealth and oil, faced a diplomatic crisis in 2017. The Gulf countries unanimously accused Qatar of promoting the Islamic State and extremism in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia, Egypt, the UAE, Bahrain, Yemen and Libya severed diplomatic ties with Qatar and isolated it. Air, land and sea routes from Saudi, the UAE, Egypt and Bahrain to Qatar were closed. The crisis once again changed the politics of Middle East. When Turkey was asked to clear its stand, it supported Qatar. On the one hand, Turkey stood by Qatar as Qatar was investing heavily in Turkey. On the other hand, Qatar supported Turkey in its campaigns in Egypt and Syria. In such a situation, the isolation of Qatar in the regional political perspective could have isolated Turkey too and Turkey did not want to lose Qatar. It is believed that Qatar supported Turkey for the sake of Muslim Brotherhood. Therefore, the Arab countries isolated Qatar on the charges of inciting terror for avenging the Qatar's action. On the other hand, Turkey supports the Tripoli government in Libya, while the UAE, Egypt and Russia support the Tobruk government. It suggests that Turkey and the UAE are opposing each other at every forum. For this reason, attempts are made for isolating Turkey, which was once a strong Muslim nation. Turkey and the UAE want to end their long feud. Hence, they have come together for accelerating the economic activities. It is so because Turkey is going through a phase of economic turmoil. Its currency, that is, Lira's value, is continuously declining. Lira's value was 7.3 against dollar in January 2021, but its value fell to 16.69 by the end of 2021. The annual inflation rate in Turkey has reached 48%. Under these circumstances, Turkey needs such a trading partner which can get it out of difficult times. Hence, Turkey has expectations from the UAE as the UAE is Turkey's major trading partner in the Gulf region. Even at the time when relations between the two countries were full of tensions, then also the two countries traded well in private sector partnerships. However, it remains to be seen whether the two countries that have come together after a long time will be able to forget their long feud or not. Israel's Prime Minister Naftali Bennett visited the Gulf country of Bahrain last week. During the visit, he met King Hamad al-Khalifa and Crown Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa. The two countries jointly discussed ways of stabilizing the Middle East region. As per the media reports, it is the first official visit of an Israeli Prime Minister to Bahrain. In the news related to Turkey and UAE, I informed you that the Muslim world countries threaten Israel because of the Palestine-Israel conflict. Israel has always been sidelined by the Muslim world countries. But the Arab world countries have started establishing relations with Israel in recent years and it has caused a lot of stir. Among the Gulf countries, 
The tensions between the other Muslim countries and Iran are being considered as a major reason behind the other Muslim countries establishing relations with Israel. The Abraham Accord is being considered as an important link behind establishing relations between the Gulf countries and Israel. In this news, we will try to understand the reasons behind the Gulf countries' increasing interest in Israel. We will also focus on two other things, that is, what is Abraham Accord and how Iran is becoming a reason for bringing the Gulf countries closer to Israel. The most important question remains that why do Arab countries threaten Israel? Israel has been a target of Arab countries ever since its establishment in 1948. Israel was established as a country in 1948, but some issues remained unsorted at the time of its establishment. Local tensions of the region turned into a territorial dispute and the tensions lasted for a very long time. Israel occupied many areas including the West Bank, the Gaza Strip and the Golan Heights. The most crucial turning point in this dispute came in 1967 when the historic war between Israel and the Arab countries was fought. It is known as the Arab-Israel War. The Arab countries were defeated in this war. Therefore, the conflict between Israel and the Arab countries lasted for decades. You can watch our episode to understand the whole conflict between Israel and Arab countries in detail. The link is given in the description below. However, a peace plan was agreed upon at the Arab League conference held in Beirut in March 2002. Under the plan, Israel was to withdraw from all its occupied areas such as West Bank, the Gaza Strip and the Golan Heights. It was decided that if Israel withdraws from these areas, then in return, the Arab countries will normalize their relations with Israel. The plan also assured justice to the Palestinians who were rendered homeless in the Arab-Israel war. The plan was supported by the international community and it began pressurizing Israel for implementing the plan. But at the same time, the incident of targeting Israeli civilians by Palestinian extremist organization Hamas ruined all efforts of international community. However, the actual turning point in the direction of improving relations between Israel and Arab countries came in 2020. The feud going on for several decades between Israel and the Arab countries started normalizing when the Abraham Accords Foundation was laid under the US President Donald Trump's initiative. Besides Israel, the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain also signed the Abraham Accord. Restoring peace and establishing diplomatic relations with Israel was agreed upon in the Abraham Accord. Israel's PM has visited Bahrain to carry forward the Abraham Accord. Although the Biden administration too made efforts for expanding the Trump's campaign, but no significant success has been achieved in this direction so far. However, there are plans of including other Muslim countries, especially the Gulf countries, under the Abraham Accords purview, but it has not been possible so far. Powerful Muslim nations like Saudi Arabia are still not willing to sign the Abraham Accord. Now two questions arise. Why some Muslim countries are not signing the Abraham Accord? And what are the intentions of rest of the Muslim countries behind signing the Abraham Accords. It is believed that the relations between Israel and Arab countries will normalize after signing the Abraham Accord. But there is little hope that peace will be established in this region. It is so because full emphasis has been laid upon normalizing the relations between Israel and Arab countries and the original issue has been ignored in the Abraham Accord. And ignoring the original issue is the Abraham Accord's main shortcoming. The reason for the mutual tensions between Israel and Arab countries is the Israel-Palestine conflict. It means that tensions prevail between Israel and the Arab countries as the Palestine issue's mystery remains unsolved till now. However, no efforts have been made for resolving the Palestine issue in the Abraham Accord. For this reason, the countries like Saudi Arabia have not yet signed the Abraham Accord. Israel did not have any diplomatic relations with the Arab countries of the Gulf region until a few years ago. But there have been talks between Israel and Arab countries recently due to shared concerns about Iran. It is so because Iran is the common enemy of Israel as well as the Arab countries like UAE and Bahrain. These countries are highly concerned about Iran's growing dominance among the Gulf countries. Iran is challenging Sunni Muslim countries like Saudi Arabia and the UAE in Yemen and Syria. Under these circumstances, it is believed that all the Gulf countries want to use Israel 
against Iran as these countries do not have a powerful intelligence agency and army like that of Israel. On the other hand, Israel also wants to crack down on Iran in terms of nuclear weapons. Besides Israel, the Gulf countries like Saudi Arabia and the UAE are also concerned on the issue of Iran's nuclear weapons. It is said that Donald Trump withdrew from the Iran nuclear deal only at the behest of the then Prime Minister of Israel. It is also a fact that Israel has long-standing relations with Egypt and Jordan in the Arab world, but Israel has never really warmly embraced these countries. It is so because Saudi Arabia and UAE are considered most powerful nations among the Sunni Arab countries. Although Saudi Arabia is silent regarding establishing relations with Israel so far, but it is believed that Saudi Arabia will have to establish relations with Israel sooner or later as the UAE has already established relations with Israel. Besides, America is making all efforts for bringing Saudi Arabia under the Abraham Accords purview. If a country like Saudi Arabia establishes relations with Israel, then the Palestine issue will definitely be left behind and some of the Arab countries are not willing to leave the Palestine issue behind. Russian President Vladimir Putin once remarked that North Korea can survive on grass but it cannot give up its nuclear program. It means that North Korea is fully focused on holding nuclear weapons. Putin's remark hints at North Korea's efforts of several decades for becoming a nuclear power nation. North Korea keeps on testing missiles every other day. North Korea conducted ballistic missile tests several times in January 2022. These tests also include the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Test, which was conducted for the first time since 2017. Why are we discussing all this? Actually, South Korean President Moon Jae-in has expressed concerns over North Korea conducting missile tests one after another and he warned of a crisis in the Korean Peninsula. According to Moon, if North Korea does not stop its nuclear or long-range missile tests, then the Korean Peninsula will be in crisis soon. There are often tensions between South Korea and North Korea regarding the arms race. South Korea may be holding North Korean activities as responsible for this crisis, but South Korea is equally responsible for the ongoing crisis in the Korean Peninsula. Along with North Korea, South Korea also keeps on testing missiles. It seems as if there is an arms race between the two countries. Although Moon Jae-in had expressed hope for a formal end to the Korean War just a few months ago, but viewing the ongoing situation, the dispute is not likely to end anytime soon. Therefore. Today we will try to understand why there is an arms race between both the countries. We will also discuss which countries are supporting South Korea and North Korea in their arms race and why are they supporting these two countries. First of all, let us look at the geographical location of South Korea and North Korea. South Korea and North Korea are part of the Korean Peninsula. The southern part of Korean Peninsula is called South Korea while the northern part is called North Korea. To the northwest of the Korean Peninsula lies China and to the northeast of the Korean Peninsula lies Russia. In the east, the Sea of Japan separates the Korean Peninsula from Japan. In the southwest, the Yellow Sea separates Korea and China. When the Second World War started in 1939, the Korean Peninsula was occupied by Japan. However, when the US carried out nuclear attacks on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945, Japan was badly defeated. As a result of it, Japan left from Korea and Korea attained independence. However, due to tensions between northern and southern part of Korea, the Korean War started. Ceasefire was announced in 1953, but the war's end was never formally announced. Therefore, the tensions between South Korea and North Korea is still visible. Both the countries have been challenging each other since the Korean War. In fact, the United States was supporting the South Korea while the Soviet Union was supporting North Korea during the Korean War. Therefore, North Korea considers US as its biggest enemy. This situation continues till today. On the other hand, with changing times, Japan developed close ties with the US. As its outcome, North Korea started considering Japan as its enemy. In the 1960s, North Korea's founder, Kim Il-sung, appealed to its citizens for developing ballistic missiles. The appeal was aimed at facing the US and Japan in a warlike situation. 
Sung wanted North Korea to be able to build such missiles which could strike Japan. In the late 1960s and 70s, the then Soviet Union and China became allies of North Korea. North Korea bought missiles from these countries. Later on, North Korea also started producing the components needed for building the weapons indigenously. During this period, North Korea bought Scud B missiles from the Soviet Union, and these missiles formed the basis of North Korea's missile program. North Korea tested the first indigenously manufactured Scud B missile named Hwasong 5 in 1984. As North Korea's missile program progressed, the world's concerns increased. North Korea acceded to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in 1985. However, North Korea withdrew from the agreement in 2003 due to some reservations. During this period, the North Korean government asked observers of the International Atomic Energy Agency to leave the country as it did not allow any interference in its nuclear program. North Korea is believed to have conducted six nuclear tests since 2006. North Korea began diplomatic talks for curbing its arms race in 2018-19, but it started developing weapons again in 2019. On the other hand, South Korea started its ballistic missile program in 1971. Under the 1979 agreement signed between South Korea and the United States, the US provided South Korea with the required materials and technology for developing missiles. South Korea successfully tested its first ballistic missile, Hyunmoo-1, in 1986. However, a condition mentioned in the agreement signed between the US has put South Korea behind North Korea in terms of missile program. Under the 1979 agreement, the US provided South Korea with the required materials for developing missiles, but at the same time, it also restricted the range of South Korean missiles to 180 kilometers. Therefore, the 1979 agreement limited South Korean capacity of developing powerful missiles. However, later on when the US lifted sanctions, South Korea kept on expanding its missile program between 2008 and 2020. Several Hyunmoo series ballistic and cruise missiles were tested during this period. The US President Joe Biden and Moon Jae-in agreed to end long-standing sanctions in May 2022. It has paved the way for further development of South Korea's missile and space programs. It is believed that the competition of holding missiles between South Korea and North Korea is mainly for establishing supremacy over each other. Both the Korean countries want to expand their missile and space programs with all their might. The first and foremost reason for developing nuclear weapons is that both countries want to respond to each other's attacks. North Korea challenges South Korea as it possesses nuclear weapons and the North Korean army is one of the largest armies of the world too. At present, North Korea has the fourth largest army of the world which has around 13 lakh military personnel. On the other hand, South Korea has the 8th largest army of the world, which has around 6 lakh military personnel. It implies that both the countries are spending huge amounts on their defense programs, mainly for establishing supremacy over each other. The question remains that whether the countries of the world are also supporting the war between South Korea and North Korea. Actually, the powerful nations of the world are definitely supporting the war between these two Korean countries. Since the Korean War, America has established dominance over southern part of the Korean Peninsula, while the northern part of the Korean Peninsula was under the dominance of communist, that is, Russia and China. South Korea is also facing sanctions from the US and United Nations due to its actions. The US and the UN issued several warnings to North Korea for stopping its nuclear tests, but North Korea did not stop the nuclear tests. Hence, the US and the UN have imposed sanctions on North Korea for crippling the North Korean economy so that it is forced to stop conducting the nuclear tests. At present, Russia and China are providing full support to North Korea. For example, when North Korea launched a missile in January 2022, then the US proposed sanctions on some North Korean citizens in the United Nations Security Council. But Russia and China opposed the US proposal. We have been repeatedly mentioning that America and Russia enmity has a long history and therefore these two countries openly challenge each other anywhere in the world. But it is interesting to understand China's interference in North Korean affairs. Although South Korea and China have more than 25 years of diplomatic ties, 
but there are considerable differences between the two countries in security related matters it is so because an agreement on security was signed between china and north korea in 1961 it is believed that north korea is influenced by the communist ideology while south korea is influenced by a different ideology besides there is a communist government in china too both north korea and china have a one party system of governance china supports north korean president Kim Jong Un In such a situation China feels unsafe on an ideological level as a one party state China is of the view that if there is a change of power in North Korea then it will be directly affected if the government changes in North Korea then Chinese people can also raise their voice against the communist government if such a situation arises some day then it will not be suitable for China China also fears that if Kim Jong Un's rule ends then millions of north korean citizens will enter china after crossing the border under these circumstances the economic burden on china will increase and there may be chaos it is also likely that after kim jong un's ouster from power korea gets unified if korea gets unified then the united korea will be dominated by the us and it will not be in china's interests china is supporting north korea due to all these reasons on the other hand america and russia have become adversaries on the Korean peninsula only for gaining geopolitical edge however it remains to be seen whether the war between north korea and south korea will ever come to an end now let us look at the three questions based on today's bulletin one why is turkey isolated from the rest of arab countries in the middle east described with reference to middle east politics two what is abraham accord Why are the Arab countries avoiding coming under the accord's purview? Describe. 3. What are the reasons behind the arms race between North Korea and South Korea? Explain the reasons behind China's support to North Korea. That is all for this episode of Around the World in 7 Days. See you in next episode with more stories which continue to shape the world around us.